Okay, <clears throat> let's start. So uh, we have completed the first uh, introductions. This one last time on the e, uh, BEKM three four five three microcontrol technology. So I'm going to resume uh, the lectures here. This file is on network addition. Yes, yes. All right. So we stop at here and end lecture one. So that this one should be okay. Okay. Uh, let's proceed. So the next slide will be this one. Uh, this is actually about the micro C broad diagram. So uh, this is just to, to let you know what is actually inside that. So you are going to learn about the ports, I.O. ports, which is this one. Okay, the I.O. ports. Uh, hold on eh. Uh, let me have this team next one over here. And then the OBS is here. Okay, so this is the block diagram. Block diagram, you may not need to remember anyway. So what you need to know is uh, that the more terms that you're going to learn is, uh, you can see from here. You cannot see the slide. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me, sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. Okay, sorry. Let me do the sharing. Uh, that's why you need to let me know. Sharing contents. Ah, sorry, can you see it now? Alright, sorry, sorry just now. So we stopped last time uh, on this uh, on the same slides and this is the last of the end of, um, end of, end of lecture. So we are going to start on this one, on the micro microcontroller broad diagram. Okay, this is the, the block diagram. So, um, if you remember uh, the microprocessor, so basically you are going to learn about the input-output legs. I mean, so, sort of like that. So, you can see that here, the, the group by port A, port B, port C. This is part of it, lah, port C. So, PIC 16F is going to be up to five different group ports, which is from port A to port E. So this is just a block diagram. So you are going to have the memory here. You have to have all these things together, work, how it works, communications, blah, 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 all the timer, EEPROM. So this is actually the block diagram. So just look at it and try to digest some of the terms that are going to be learned later. Okay, next one. This is about the microcontroller internal architecture. So when they develop this uh, microcontroller, right, they are going to base on two types of architectures. The first one, they call it Harvard Architecture. And the second one, they call it Von Neumann Block Architecture. So there are two architectures here. So all microcontrollers use one from these two basic designs models. Okay. So what's the difference of these two models? It's uh, very simple. The models is about two different ways of data exchange between CPU and memory. So last time, if you can remember that uh, microprocessor, you have the CPU and you have the memory. Between these two, there will be going to be a bus between them. So there will be a communications, right? So you can see that this is the one. So what is the difference will be Harvard versus Von Neumann. So Von Neumann is this one. And Harvard is this one. So it's very clear on the difference for these two types of architecture. Okay, the first one you man, you can see that you have the RAM. Yeah, it, it is recorded. I'm going I have another one recorded. My I'm using OBS. Don't worry about that. I, I think yeah, it's recorded. So uh you have this CPU here. And you have the memory. Eh? Memory, it can be any memory types, which is this. For example, you have the RAM, random access memory. And you also have the ROM, read-only memory. Program means, program means where is the location, sorry, where it, the, the, the memory is used to save your program. Remember that when you do the microprocessor, uh, Compiling and get the hex code for for last time you are using simulation, right? So 
when I teach you guys how to compile and then you're going to get the machine code, that machine code will be burn or flash. They call it like a CD-ROM burner. Eh? So you're going to burn it to your ROM. So you, the program is going to be put in your ROM over here. Okay. So the difference will be the connections. You can see that volume and communication slow and inefficient due to only the data bus is uh, one way or using the same one over here which is this volume and architecture also have more instructions that this is the command okay this is the command that it used to do the execution over here compared to the Harvard over here Harvard you can see that the RAM and the ROM for the memory is not put together and having the same bus like this so you have the separate one Harvard have two different buses which is the data buses and have less instruction set which is the RSS they call it reduced instruction set of computer this is the common so based on this one right you you can see it's very simple you have one way road over here compared the two way different road over here so the communication is much faster and better for the Harvard system right this is very simple clear you have a highway two two big highways versus one highway so the communication is much better in the Harvard I, I already record this one no worry about that I'm going to dismiss this one no worry if I do not record it I'm going to record it again <laughs> so this is a two types of uh, Harvard and von Neumann so this is a two architecture so you just need to understand the difference of it okay next one this is the device overview okay my book the first page will be this one this is the one that you have to look and understand most of the grouping of the pins you can see that this is your pins from 1 to 40 this is 40 pins PIC 16F 77A or this is X778 the same packaging but different model but we are going to use this one PIC 16F 87AA 74A sorry so this is the pin. Okay, the red color is very simple, the power pins. So what is the functions of power pins? The power pin is to receive the power and to the ground. So you have the power pins. Of course, all electronics must have a power and must have a ground. Else it cannot function. Okay, electronic. So that is, that's the difference between electronic and electrical. So what's the difference? Eh? If you can know that uh, when you learn electronics versus the other course that, that learning electrical, anybody can, uh, can, can suggest or anybody can think that the difference on it? What's the difference so far? So this is uh, all about electronics. Eh? Okay, uh, if there's an answer, so I'm going to proceed first, this one. So over here, over here, look at the first pin here. This is what they call it master clear. Master clear is the pin used to reset the PIC. For example, if your PIC hang while programming while, while executing your program you can reset the PIC by giving a low signal here screen show uh, screen show do you, do you use screen show okay screen show this one eh? slideshow are you thinking about slideshow this one all right uh, this is the one Okay, so this is the power pins, and this is the power pins here. This is uh, for your plus 5 volt and ground. Okay, so the next one, which is uh, very important, is the green color. 
this is to connect the crystal clock the function is to give a clock signal to the PIC over here so by having this clock then it can execute the program so all electronic must have this crystal clock and the power pins over here okay next one then you have this one you have this one pot A they call it pot B pot C pot D and pot E this pot mainly used for the I.O input or output mainly used you can see that it stated here RA0 RA1 this is the pin names RA they call it RA0 RA1 RA2 3 4 5 up to 5 only for port A for B we have 8 pins RB0 here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 D also we have uh, how many C B C C we have 8 C start from here is this is port C RC0, RC1, RC2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and the rest is like D maybe around I think D is also 7 or 8 8 from here D0, D1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and port E we have only 3 which is RE0, RE1, RE2 so all these pins can be used as your input output for example you are going to use LED, so you are going to connect an LED over here. So this is your LED. And this is your resistor here. And this is your ground. So this is, you can use it as an output. Also, you can use this pin also as an input possible if you want to use as the switch. So this is for example, switch. So, this one going to be, uh, I forgot to write down a switch here. Mm. This is going to be a pull, ups, pull down switch. Uh, something like that. I forgot how to, how you, you can use it as uh, your input here. So, all this A, B, C, D, E can be used as your input output only. So, we don't, we are not going to touch other than that. So, now, the important thing is this one first, the master clear. Second one is the power pins. The third one is the clock pins. And the fourth one is your port, grouping port A, B, C, D, E for your I.O. So this is how it works. Any questions so far? You can see my drawings, right? Yes. So, any questions on here? Faham? Understand? No questions? So, if no questions, I'm going to proceed. Eh? So, next one. This is the clock or they call it oscillator. So, that's why if I use a slideshow, I cannot see your I cannot see my Microsoft Teams. Let me double check my Microsoft Teams. Eh? Uh, this cut here. So if any questions, all right. So I'm going to open up back. Okay. So this is a clock or oscillator. They call it clock. You learn it in your lab last time. I I hope that you learn in your lab how to work with the oscillator or they call it clock. So this is a pen. Uh, so this is you can call it clock or XT, crystal clock. They call it. So microcontroller clock oscillator sources. So this is back to this one just now. The clock must be put over here. This is example, these two pins clock in and clock out. They call it oscillator 1 or oscillator 2. So example in this one, you can see that this is the two pins connected to the clock. 
this is the circuit of your clock. If you use this crystal clock, you are going to use these two components, which is the caps, caps to filter out or to make the clock signal very tuned, very chanting, very nice. This is like a filtering system. Okay, this is the crystal clock that's going to generate this clock pulse to your PIC. If do not have pulse, like you, if you don't have a pulse, then this one die. It must have pulse and it must have the power supply. So like us, we have a pulse and also we have to breathe or eat whatever things to get the energy, then you can work. Very simple. This is a concept. Okay, so there are three, four types of oscillator that being used, but normally in our lab, we use this one. The rest, we don't really use. So the first one, we call it XT. XT is crystal clock, which is this one. You see that this is external, they call it crystal. RC is resistor capacitor pair, which is, uh, I, I don't think so we have here. Oh, this one. So this is RC pair. This is another type of clock. Uh, the next one is ceramic resonator, just a ceramic, and the last one is silicon resonator. It's just type of uh, resonator that give a clock pulse also. So no matter what, your PIC, if you work with any electro electronic components, majority of the controller must, not majority, all of them must have the clock. Else, it does not know how to execute the program. It does not know where to execute the program. Okay, that is uh, the functions of the clock oscillator okay so they, 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 they call it clock our clock is different our clock is to to show the time what is the time what is the alarm we that is our time but for the clock in terms of electro electronic function it will give you the signal like this this is they call it clock pulse okay all right so let's move on so this is the one example when you using oscillator. So when you start power up your system, the oscillator will oscillate until it start to oscillate uniformly. Here is analog, right? But in our digital, it will be like this only. The pulse will be consistently like this with a standard time up and down. This is the same one with this one. Okay, this is your T, the whole oscillation, and this is your T. You can see the frequency, that's all the case. So that's why your computer, remember that your computer, right, when you purchase a computer, that's the parameter that you are looking for. For example, your i7, I don't know how many gigs right now, that is the clock of the system. So the faster, the bigger the clock, the faster it will be, right? How many? 1 gig versus 7 gig. 7 gig is much faster. So that's the thing that you are going to uh, look at the uh, parameter when you want to purchase a CPU, which is the whole set system. That's why you, when you read the CPU, you know the, the, the gigahertz, how many gigahertz the spec for it. So that is the case for this oscillator. Right, so why this is important? Because when you look at the clock, there are two terms that you need to understand. Two terms, eh? New terms for you. The first term they call it clock cycle. The second term they call it instruction cycle. So these two are related. Okay, you can see that. For example, in this image, in this image, right, you can see that this is your clock pulse. Okay, this is your clock pulse. You can see that for a clock cycle, if you learn about the analog last time, the clock cycle, the full cycle will be like this. This is the whole T, correct? Eh? This is your T from here to here. This is your full cycle. Same goes to the digital clock here. So a clock cycle will be only this one. 
here is the clock cycle and here is the clock cycle which is your t the full cycle all right so what is instruction cycle after you know what is your clock cycle the de definitions of instruction cycle is instruction cycle is the cycle time for one execution of an instruction one instruction one instruction oh my handwriting here because i'm using mouse i eh? sorry eh? is one instruction eh? one instruction of execution will require four clock cycle so if you have four clock cycle here so it will execute one execution okay you want me to repeat or not so that is the term instruction cycle is four clock cycle so one two three four this is your instruction cycle it consists of four clock cycle one two three four so if you have two instruction cycle then it will have another four here then this is going to be up to this one this is two instruction cycle okay that is the term so far so good any questions that you want to ask Faham? Hilang? Okay. Faham, sir. Alright. So, there's a question. Let me check the question first. Hey, what happened here? Oh my god, it's fine. Okay. So, understand eh? So far, so far no problem eh? Alright. Okay, Th that's one question. Sir, is it any difference between different port? Okay. That's a good question here. The port. Go back to this image, right? The pot. Okay, the pot. What is the difference, eh? Is there any difference between different pot? Okay, for the initial part, this pot can be used as your input output. Okay, the difference is, for example here, pot A, you can see that this one pot A, Instead of they are putting only RA0 like the rest of here, they are also use another term which is AN0. AN1, AN5, AN6, 7. Okay, for R notations, okay, for this R and pot, this is for digital IO. Again, I repeat, if the notation say R with the port here and the numbers, this is for digital I.O. Digital I.O. means it will have this type of signal only. 0 or 5 volt. That's all. That's why they call it digital I.O. Whereas, for A.N. notations like this, A.N., and the number which is only for port A. So means that this pin for port A can be either digital input output or slash here. It also can be set as analog input. Input sahaja. Not output. Analog input. What does it mean? Eh? Analog input will be like this. This is analog. For example, your sensor your sensor is producing an upload analog signal like this so this is not digital this is going to be used to this particular pin and you have to sample it to get the value from this sensor that you are going to learn in a to d but bear, 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 bear in your mind right now 
So all these port, port, port A to port E, they are all used for I.O. Input, output. Digital, they call it R here. And analog will be AN over here. Okay, that's the difference on the port. You can set up as your input or you could also can set up as your output. There will be no issues on that. Okay, that is the answer for the question just now. Let me check. Any question yet? Please cut. So, any more question? So, that's the difference. So far, just bear in mind that's for your I.O. Okay, tada, we move eh? Faham that okay so far? Alright. So, again here. So, this is just example for the clock and the instruction cycle just now. So, this is the questions only. Example eh? Given a microcontroller with a 20 megahertz crystal. So, this is your clock. So, this is your clock. Megahertz. This is very old time technology. Now, your computer is gigahertz already. 20 megahertz crystal. Calculate the time for one instruction cycle. Of course, you know that one instruction cycle will consist of four clock cycle. Okay, solution. The oscillator is equivalent to 20 megahertz, which is this one, your crystal clock. And one clock cycle, of course, one clock cycle is one clock cycle just now is one over 20 megahertz. This is like your frequency, right? Okay, so one clock cycle is equivalent to 1 over 20 megahertz. So this is your frequency. One tempo is equivalent to 1 over 20 megahertz. And of course, this is for one clock cycle. If you have to want one instruction cycle, so this is going to be times 4. That is equivalent to one instruction cycle. So let's look at the answer here. So one instruction cycle is equivalent to four clock cycle. And this is the answer. The answer will be 200 nanosecond for one instruction cycle. So that is the calculation, very simple basic calculations. This is, you also can say that this is your frequency. This is oscillator, it must have a frequency. Remember last time in your secondary school when you learn physics fourth year, uh, uh, in uh, four, form 4, when you learn about by using the ruler, you play around with the frequency, right? You play around with that one, that's actually a frequency. So it oscillates. I'm not sure whether uh, you still learn in the form 4 or not. Okay, so that's the case. So oscillator is about frequency and the clock cycles, and the clock cycle is different. One instruction going to have four clock cycle. Okay, that's the relationship. Okay, okay next one. Uh, let's try. Get the instruction cycle for a microcontroller with 8 megahertz clock. So 8 megahertz is very small megahertz, so this is the frequency. So get instruction cycle, of course, is 1 over 8 megahertz times 4. Right? This is the answer, maybe. Yeah, this is the answer, which is a 0 0.5 microsecond. And the second question here. The second question here is just a reverse engineering where you are given the instruction cycle and you need to find out what is the oscillator frequency. So this year you can play around, you can see that the answer is here. Okay, so you are, you are receive, you have this one and then finally you need to find out what is the uh, frequency of the clock. Okay, alright. Okay, any questions for this one before I move? Let's check. Why we have to multiply 2 times 4? Okay, the question is why we have to multiply 2 times 4 clock cycle. Uh, which one? Is this this one? Why we have to multiply two times? Two times. Which is the two times over here? I cannot see two times. This is four. Multiply 
Oh, okay. Ma two, two times. Uh, Vincent, I, I, I don't really get your questions. Can, can you, can you say? Raising your mic. Um, why we have to multiply two, two times? I mean, the first time for four, four cycle and then another, another, another one for four cycle. Which one that I dub, uh, I times two? Is it in this light? Yeah, in, in this light. Uh, uh, sorry, I don't get the two times here. Okay, the okay the clock is twenty megahertz, correct? The yeah. clock is twenty megahertz. Calculate the time for one instruction cycle. One instruction cycle. This is oscillation twenty megahertz. Okay, the frequency is one twenty megahertz. Then I only times four clock cycle because I need to find out the instruction cycle, the time, which is four. So which one is times two? Okay, all right. Is it okay? Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry, sir. So it's it's not two. It's only one. All right. All right. No problem. Okay, no problem, Vincent. All right. Okay. So that's the difference between the clock cycle and the uh, instruction cycle. So instruction cycle will re will require four clock cycle. That's all. Very simple. So you can go back to this uh to this diagram. You can see that you have four clock cycle here. This is uh, considered as one instruction cycle. This is not. This is a. Uh, this is not for instance. This is one instruction. Cycle. Okay. This is. Uh, I think this is wrong over here. This is four clock cycles, right? This is one instruction cycle. So I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to fix this one. Hold on. So this is not four instruction cycle, right? So this is going to be. Uh, one here. One instruction cycle is considered with a four clock cycle, which is one, two, three, four. Okay, next one. Okay, uh, okay, this one I, 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 I'm going to skip this one, no need this one pipelining. This is the process of uh, how it fetch and uh, the whole process. So this is not really important. Okay, uh, there's another terms that we are going to learn. The first one they call it brown out, and the second one they call it reset pins. Remember that just now I talked about the reset pins. So like your PC, when the your PC hang, you try to reset it, right? They call it hard reset or whatever. That is related to the pins itself. So when your microcontroller got problem, when you run the program at your microcontroller, then you have problems. Uh, it hang. So what you can do is, you can see that there will be a circuit at this one, here, at microcontroller here. This is bar, they call it bar. Why bar? Means that this is active low. Means that you have to reset it to ground. It's a switch here, for example, this is a switch, right? You switch it to ground, then the whole system will reset. If you put it to pull up to 5 volt, it will not reset. So that's why the, the function of the bar here, they call it. So this is actually going to be resetting. When they call it low, active low here, means that you, if you give 0 volt to this pin, then it's going to uh, reset the whole system. That is the master clear. Eh? So that's the case for the terms the reset pins. Brown out is another term they call it which is a dangerous condition when microcontroller being turned off or power supply voltage drops to a minimum causing problems. Microcontroller usually has a bit in circuit for reset which is this one. This is uh, built in, it's different case. Eh? You have another one, this is extra, extra, external. This is not internal, this is external. So brownout is a dangerous condition when microcontroller being turned off or power supply voltage drop to minimum causing problems. So it means that your microcontroller, your VCC must have at least 5 volt. For example, later the power got problem, right? Then you are going to receive 3 volt going to your system. This is going to be uh, not enough to function a system or your microcontroller. Then this is condition, you call it brownout means that your controller 
cannot receive more power anymore. So that is the process. Lah. So you can use this one to reset internally. Okay, that is the two terms here. Brown out and the reset pin. The same pin is just a reset pin. The brown out is the term. Terma terma there. Okay, so far so good. Eh? So I'm going to push for the last term. This is the one that you need to know. So this is the memory organizations for your system. So remember that in your microcontroller versus your microprocessor. Microprocessor last time, you're working with the RAM most of the time. I draw last time the memory like this. If you can remember that, 68K, you start from 000, 000, 000, 000 location up to dollar sign F, 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 dollar sign. This is the last location. This is the first location. This is your RAM. Again, in your microcontroller, you are going to work with the RAM here. And also, you are going to work with another two types of memory. They call it ROM. And another one, they call it EEPROM. Okay. The first one for the RAM, I, I give you uh, the first one that very easy because you learned this one before. In this RAM, it has the registers. So, goes back to the registers. Last time, the term for the registers. And the, the thing is, for the RAM, it will not permanently save. Means that once you turn off your system, the memory will be erased. You turn it back, there will be no data anymore. All being reset back to the original location, original values. So this is the easiest part. Okay, let's look at the ROM in your microcontroller. Okay, what's the function of it? This is a random, a read-only memory, sorry. Read-only memory. Okay. This is used permanently to save program being executed. Again, I repeat this one. When you write down your coding and you compile it as a hex file, then the dot hex file that one will be transferred to this ROM and save over here. They call it flash process or you, you burn the program inside the ROM. This is what they call it use permanently to save program being executed. Okay, that's the function, most of it. It's also known as program memory because this is your program. Also known, this is where your memory, this is your, where your program being saved. That's why they call it program memory, which is your ROM. The ROM is a flash technology and contents can be changed by providing special programming voltage at 13 volt. If you want to burn your ROM, you are required to give this 13 volt. It's a process being given. When you want to burn your system, when you want to burn your ROM, it will automatically change the voltage input to 13 volt. This is quite high because your system only 5 volts to work. Only for the purpose of flashing the program, then it will require this 13 volt. Okay, so that is the ROM. Okay, next one. The last memory here, they call it EEPROM. Also, the last one they call it ROM is also read only memory. So you can see that the function is similar to ROM, able to permanently save. So read only memory can be saved, and uh, if you have problems, power up and power up, the data is still there. However, however, the EEPROM can be changed during operation. When your program is executing, you can change the value inside your EEPROM and put the data over there without having this 13 volt. Means that when your program is working, you can save any data. For example, if you want to develop a data tracker to uh, lock the data, as for example, you want to put in the forest. Okay, or in the Antarctic, Antarctica. So you want to put there and you want to live uh, for a while. Then 
when you take the data, suddenly the system gone. I mean, the power supply cut off. But eventually, you still can get the data because it's already safe prior to the shutdown. To make uh, things easier to compare, this is similar like your SD card. Anybody knows SD card? Yes. Everybody have handphone, right? Yes. So doctor. you have to imagine that this type of like an SD card. So when you want to put your picture inside there, your system must be turned on, correct? Then you snap the picture. Means that the data is going to be safe during the operation. It's safe over there. So when you shut down your phone and you turn up back the phone system, you can simply go back to the image and look at it. Also, you can take the SD card, go to your PC, and you can download back again the data from there. So that is the that is the, the easiest way to understand. So it works like your SD card. This is the one. So any questions? Very simple, right? You have the RAM, you have the ROM, and you have the EEPROM. Any question? Faham? Ada soalan? Tak ada soalan? So, uh, you, must to, you must understand the concept of these three memories, the type of the memories, okay? So, this one, this is the old time already, so don't need to have this one. Let me check. Okay. Even though it's going to end, but I'm going to show you something else. So, uh, the ROM and RAM, this is just uh, the, the, the components of it. This is your RAM memory. This is your EEPROM. This is inside your microcontroller. Okay, so the difference is very simple. The RAM is actually going to be uh, the one that cannot be saved. ROM, you can flash it by 13 volt. Then you put, can put your program over there. But for the EEPROM, majority is going to be used to save a data or change something uh, to capture any data and save it over there. Okay. Alright. Ada soalan? The rest is actually uh, very simple. This is about the RAM just now. This is uh, registers again. And this is uh, another register. This is, you just need this one later. This one shouldn't be hard for you because I think you can understand this one maybe later in the process of learning. Alright, this is I.O. I.O. Pops, this is the way that how you, this is going to be teach in the next class. Next week, I'm going to start with the uh, software. So, any questions? Ada soalan? This card. Any soalan? Any, any question? Is it okay? Everything is good. Everything is good. Alright. Uh, so for this 10 minutes before we end the class, this uh, yeah, download protest for this. Uh, yes, I'm going to show this one actually. Uh, the important thing is two software that you need to know. I don't know how, how it can work like this because you're supposed to work with the lab, right? Yes, uh, Proteus, you have to do it by yourself because Proteus, I think you can get it uh, for free to use it. So Proteus, let me show you the Proteus here. This is your Proteus. Okay, this is a Proteus. This is a simulator. Okay, example here, the one that you're going to use, they call it ICs over here. ICs, eh? ISIS, not the uh, ICs that one. This is I ICs, this one. So this is your workspace to work with. For example, you want to get your PIC, then you just get the devices. PIC sixteen F eight seven seven A. So you can take this one and then okay. So this is the simulation. You can see that this is your PIC. Okay, then you can draw this one, you can put LED, for example, this is later. Eh? Uh, this is maybe you want to put uh, LED. Mm. 
like emitting diode, green LED. Okay, green LED for example, you have the red LED, you have this one, okay, close. Maybe you want to put LED over here and then you can start to put this one and then you are going to have ground. Then this one. It's quite simple. So for example, this one, then you can do some simulation over here. So for example, you want to see uh, some simulation. Okay, let's, let's show this one. I'm going to close this one again. Uh, this one close. No changes. Oh, yes. All right. Uh, I have few uh, example last time when I worked with this uh, uh, board. Let me try. Okay. Okay. This is a uh, a moto. They will be going to be in your third chapter. So I can run this one. This is how this is already a complete one, and then I already have the hex file here. This is my hex file. When you do the coding, then you have to compile it as a hex file. Then you can take this hex file and put inside this PIC. It's just a simulator. And then when you run this one, you can see that my stepper moto is working. This is the blue color is zero volt. The red color is 5 volt. This is a motor driver. This is a battery. You can see that this is a stepper motor, how it works. So you can simulate most of your project in the simulator in Proteus. Before you download it on the real, uh, real I mean hardware, normally we are going to debug over here. You want to see the results from your coding that you can see from here. So you need to download it. I got this one from the internet. It's actually from the Proteus website. Then you can download this one. I think it should be free for those who want to use it for academics and maybe for the very easy uh, programming over here, simulation. Okay. All right. This is your Proteus. Another one is Micro C. This is where you write your program. I don't know whether I have uh, any examples or not. Let me try to have a look. Okay. okay uh, for example, uh, you can see this one. This is how I write my my code. I'm going to teach you next week. Start. Start. We have to. We have to start next week already. That's why possibly next week, maybe one hour uh, is lecture and another one hour we have to, uh, what you call that, play around with the software. So that's why you need to uh, put yourself, I mean you have to download it and then try to figure out and try to understand when I teach you this program. Okay, so just to give you a heads up, just to give you a, 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 a just to want to make you guys familiar, so this is how you work and uh, write down and we are based on C++ the language is C++ okay the language is you learn in your first year so bring back the memory on how you want to do the programming so I'm going to teach you this one so two software micro C and Proteus Try to figure out how. Okay, any questions for that? Uh, can we use C++? Uh, okay. Uh, we have a uh, lots of IDE for PIC. Like MP Lab or whatever. But in this class, I only want to use Micro C. C++ is a language basically used in this micro C. So the IDE will be micro C Pro at uh, micro C. Uh, we don't use MPLAB. MPLAB because I, I, I don't learn also on MPLAB. So it's, it's the same thing. You, you want to achieve the programming, you can use this IDE. I'm going to refer this IDE in my, in my process of learning and teaching and learning. And we are using C++ as its language. That's why 
when I write down, if you can see that, remember that if else statement, that is all the looping statement, right? That is all C++. So that's why you need to remember that because I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want, when I say about if else statement, you do not understand. Means that you are not understand about the C++. Okay, what is the exact application we should download? One thing, the first one, you have to find out the Proteus software. Proteus is Proteus. And then the second one is Micro C. M-I-K-R-O-C, that is the software. Two softwares only. Because this is simulations only, so we're going to use two. Later, when you use the download, hopefully that this COVID can solve in another six weeks, you guys can come back here and play around with the real hardware. And that is when you learn another software, how to flash or put the program inside your controller. Uh, yes, I think it's a free version, I think, over there. The one that I have, I'm not really sure. I think, uh, I'm not really sure we have the free version or not. Because I tried, uh, I forgot, this is quite long, long, long semester last time. But uh, let me try to check my C right now. Micro C software. I'm not sure whether this. I think this is paid, right? Ah. Oh, that's another thing, then. Eh? You have to pay for this. This is Microsoft Pro, eh? I'm not sure where I got this from last time. That's the issues uh, on the software when you are not here. Uh, uh, <laughs> should we have a crap version? Uh, okay, let, I, I, I don't want to see. You, you can try. I mean, you can ask your seniors on that. Also. Okay, try to get it. Because we are we are in the UCS. So I don't know how to how to give the UCS the software to you guys. Uh. Try to figure out first, eh? Try to figure out. From your seniors, eh? From your seniors. Okay, any more questions? So, uh, to recap, okay, to recap, eh? To recap what we learned so far today, uh, we learned about this uh, architecture, the Van Newman versus Harvard. Okay, the difference on it. Then, the most important one, you have the first introduction, I mean the real things about PIC16F and the pins from pin 1 to pin 40. So, by groups, I just group it for much easier for you to look at it. By groups, the power pins, the clock pins, the port for the input-output. So, the master clear pins, that is the most important one. Then, you learn about the clock oscillator. Then the term for the clock, which is the clock cycle and the executions of the instructions, which is the four clock cycles. Then you learn about the term for brown out and the functions of reset pins. Then the most important one, the memory organizations, which is the parts inside the, inside the microcontroller, you have the three types of memories. So there are difference on that, and then this is the one that we are using. It. Okay, I think that's all for this one hour session. And also I introduce you to software that you need to find out, Proteus and Micro C. Uh, again, MP Lab, I don't use it because I don't have it. So hopefully that uh, we can try to figure out this uh, Micro C later. And maybe I need to ask Dr. Zaki so for his opinion too. Okay, so far we try to figure out how. Okay, so that's all for today. So in uh, 7 minutes at 4.15, your assessment will be open and then you can answer 10 questions over there. Okay, any questions?
So by right, the first sweep already completed. Quite fast, huh? So we already in the first sweep already. Okay, thank you very much. If that's the case, then uh, we, we are going to meet you guys next week. We are going, going to combine the class already. So next week, we're going to meet on Tuesday at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Alright, then we're going to meet again on Thursday. So thank you very much for this uh, time for, for me with you guys. And do not forget to complete the assessment in ULEN. Okay, so see you guys next week. All the best for the 10 questions objective. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. I'm going to download the attendance first here. All right.